Hello there, and uh, welcome to this video on um, the Visa set, well, the Visa swivel plate that, this, that I have made here. In this video, I'll go over the assembly and actually first the disassembly of this, and after that, the actual assembly of this, uh, and yeah, show it up in uh, operation as well. As you might notice, this is a monitor. This is the monitor that this is going to be mounted on, and uh, yeah. So, right, let's take this bearing apart first because I need to add a different spring to it. I used this spring initially and it is just not up to the task. So now I'm going to be using this spring that I have to bend a bit myself because it is much tighter. Uh, it uses much thicker gauge uh, spring steel. Now, hopefully, and there should be pictures on the page, on the Thingiverse page, where this video is in, intended for, of what this is, and a description. But uh, in case you watch it elsewhere, this is a swivel plate uh, that provides 90 degrees of swivel with, uh, well, with locking in. I don't know what to call that, but basically with some with a spring that makes sure it stays in either of the two positions, uh, roughly. Let's see if I can get these screws out. Now, as you may see when I take this apart, this bearing is based on Christopher Lema, also known as the Goofy on Thingiverse, parametric slew bearing. So let's take the top, race, uh, top part of the inner race off, and let's take these bolts out of the way. And there are 32 rollers in this. Which are gonna go quite a few places, but that's okay. Um, I printed this in PLA. I think if I want to do this again, I might do it in PTG just for the longer term stability. Uh, P PLA can form rather easily under load over time, but the first thing I've done here, and I can't properly see my monitor, but my camera monitor, but uh, that is to glue on some M4 knots to these wings here. Uh, the M4 knots actually sit fine, you can tighten them without gluing them in, but when I have this mounted to the monitor and then hold the monitor up to the wall mount, it becomes hard to both fiddle a screw in from uh, the left and hold the not while also threading that in and holding the monitor becomes rather difficult. So, how do you assemble this? Well, first off, you take and put the outer race down. And, um, oh, actually, yeah. So, because I printed this with supports here, this sagged a bit more than it should. So I'm just gonna heat that a bit, actually. Let's see if we can just get it with a normal uh, knife. So just cleaning this up. Now why am I doing this? Well because uh, I just have had this assembled and that's why I found out that spring was too weak. Now if you're curious, the previous version I did of this is here and I tried to use magnets to uh, to uh, detend it but those were too weak too. At least mounted in this orientation and I couldn't really mount them otherwise, uh, otherwise at the time because it was kind of a hack as is. But once you have this part cleaned up, which is one of the races, I don't f remember. You don't have to put in washers like I did here. I, I fucked up on the um, chamfering on the... Uh, I chamfered these for M4 bolts, but they are for M3 bolts, so... Much more chamfer. Right. Um, you put this down like so. And then we just start putting in the um, rollers and alternating... Actually, take that back. First, what you do is you put in 
all of the uh, screws, M3 screws. I'm using M3 by 25 and that is what I would recommend for this because that just exactly matches and gives you the least amount of stick out on the other side which is important because as you might see I need a stack of three washers on here just to get about three, three and a half millimeters of uh, height to allow space for the nuts on the other side. Right, so uh, I have some washers in here because I made the holes too big so they go too deep but um, you shouldn't need that and only put them in the chamfered holes here. The other part needs to, um, this part over here needs to be able to move uh, underneath this bit here so there's not really any space. So then what you want to do is you want to flip this over, try and hold onto all of the screws, fail. I'm just going to drag this to the edge. Oh, that didn't go any, any good. Okay, so, can we try again? Sometimes I've found it easier to just do this and then flip that around. So now we have it like that. And now you do what I was just about to do earlier. Put in the um, rollers in alternating directions. So, now that every 32 of them are in, uh, it is time to place the top on. And uh, that should be as simple as just lining, first of all, turning this so that you know that it's the right way. Because this is limited to 90 degrees of rotation, it is important that you don't put it on like this. Um, you're going to have a very funky monitor set up. And there we go. As you can see what I meant about uh, using 25mm bolts, that is a very good distance for that. So now we have the nuts loosely on. Um, time to tighten it up. There we go. And then the next step would be to add a spring to this. And I will be right back because this is going to take a while with my spring as I'm going to have to bend and customize it. And the camera is in the way for that. So uh, I'll be right back. Welcome back. So now I have mounted a spring, as you can see. I have significantly shortened the existing uh, one I had. Uh, actually, it is less than half the size now. Um, and this means that when I turn this... Uh, it'll snap back in place. And if I turn it past a certain point... It'll snap back in the other direction. So, that means that this monitor will then be fixed in one of two directions. Now. The way I want this monitor to be set up is that I want the bottom edge down here facing my other two monitors and I want it to, to rotate so that the bottom edge is in the bottom when I have it in landscape mode. And I have found out, in my case, that means having this mounted like so. So, that is what I will do. I don't know what the rule is for it, I just held up my monitor and looked at what was the right orientation. So, 
Now, in case of my monitor, it's M4 bolts, and this is what this is made for. So I just put the bolts in here, and uh, they have to be forced in a bit because I glued in those nuts. So what I do is I just set the bolt in the hole at an angle, and I kind of thread it in at an angle, and then I can get it in. So, when I've done that, I'll be back. Okay, so the bolts are in, they're now sticking out back here, and there's a sweeper car driving around outside, okay. Um, it is important if you do what I did and glue in the nuts, if you do do that, it is important that you make sure that your bolts that you're going to be using have a small enough, um, well, in my case, two and a half millimeter Allen key uh, hex in the nut, because that this, this key here will fit down through the uh, M4 nuts which are mounted in here and allow me to thread it on. So let's see. Yeah, this, this was the orientation. And in my case, because these nuts down here... Well, okay, so you could just bolt this directly onto the monitor and then it would sit on these nuts. And you could do that, but I'd rather not. I'd rather want it to sit on these here and have the nuts free so that I don't like make indents into my into the plastic here in the back. Uh, so these are not strictly necessary, but I prefer to use a bit of spacers here. There we go. And then I just line this up. There we go. Mount it to the monitor. Right, next step would be to put this on the mount. So I will be right back after having done that, um, as that is very much a three handed job and I only have two. So uh, be right back. And welcome back. Uh, the screen has been mounted and it is time to show you what the mount does. So this is how I normally have my setup. I would use this monitor on my left here for, um, well, reading PDFs or chatting on IOC or for coding and such. And usually when I do reading, I just sit back in my chair, I pull my monitor way out towards me. But sometimes, because of the way my room is, um, this is a corner that I'm sitting in, so right here is the corner I'm sitting in. About over there is my kitchen, and there's a wall right here. And because of that wall, I can't see those two monitors, but if I pull this monitor out to my left, I can see that. So when I cook, uh, when I clean and stuff like that, I'd like to watch Netflix. And f until now, I've just been listening to it. And then if something exciting happened, I'd peek over and see what happened. But I couldn't see it from the kitchen. Now, um, so I could put it on this monitor here, and I've done that sometimes for YouTube videos, but it's like only going to take up this bit of space here. Now, what I can do is I can pull out the monitor, get my microphone out of the way, uh, and there you go. Now, the previous version I used, which was this magnet here, as I talked about, um, if if the uh, screen was the screen's mounted to the blue part, by the way. Um, so what would happen is this would be down here, and this would work okay. But when I tilted it back up, when I tilted it back up here, there's a lot more weight over here in the monitor, uh, where that's this is where the foot mounts. So there's a, a good bit more metal work there. The magnet wouldn't be strong enough, so it would just kind of sit like that. And this would look like that. Now with the stronger spring though, it seems to work. So I'm very happy about that. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in the files for this or um, the original files, I will link in the video description here on YouTube, I will link to uh, the Thingiverse page where I uploaded this, and on the Thingiverse page will be uh, a bit of text. So thank you for watching and goodbye.